This book here features 25 star NES games. And in this video, we're gonna check out all of them. It's gonna be a two part video because I'm gonna show the five star games from the book. And the next video in the near future is gonna be your five star game. So let me know what your favorite games are for the NES, your five star picks. And we're gonna use some of those comments in the next video. Up first is Baseball Stars, Be a Champ. Okay, you got a few teams to choose from. They're not licensed, but this game plays like a baseball NES game should. Now I've said it before that the baseball video games are generally pretty good. They should just be easy to pick up and play, simple controls, and this game is exactly that. I'm not the greatest at baseball in real life or in video games, but they're all still pretty playable. And if you can pick up and play a game like this, where you already know what buttons are gonna do what to steal bases, to swing your bat and all that, you're gonna be in for a good time. And Baseball Stars, you're gonna be in for a good time. It's super good. Is it five star? Well, I mean, that's not up to me. Ooh, Contra. People love this game, don't they? Well, and no reason why not. Two players simultaneous, had cool graphics for the time, cool music, cool sounds, of course, the different guns you can pick up. Fighting off the aliens. This is your run and gun style game. So many games today take influence from this game. And I'm here to tell you too, Contra, I prefer it on the NES more than I do the arcade. You, usually during this time especially, you'd want to play the game in the arcade. That was the optimal experience, but the one on the NES was just fine. And according to this book, the one on the NES is a five-star game. And I think a lot of people would agree that this game is a five-star game. This game and games like this are the reason people love Konami, retro Konami, so much. And speaking of Konami, I'm trying to beat Konami of Japan in subscribers. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you hit subscribe. Let's see if we can take down Konami together. Well, we had four Dragon Warrior games on the NES, and Dragon Warrior 4 is the one that made a five-star game. Now, I'm old school. I still call these games Dragon Warrior. It's, it hasn't been Dragon Warrior in years. <laughs> Since, like, I think the last Dragon Warrior game might, may have been on PS1 or 2. Uh, Dragon Quest, you know it as now, of course. That's, it was always Dragon Quest in Japan. And there's something about this game that makes it a five-star game. Now, it's your turn-based RPGs, maybe just as the storyline, maybe it's just more intuitive, maybe it just lasts longer. I'm not sure, but people say this is, I mean, out of the, the four games, people love the first one. That was like the introduction. Uh, but man, Dragon Warrior 4, that's the one that people keep going to. That's the one to collect on. And it's just a huge five-star game. Now, I have a copy of Dragon Warrior 4 right here. I didn't really need to show it to you, but I did want to show you that this was also during a time where games included, like, maps and stuff. I mean, first of all, the manual itself is, like, the full size of the box. It's not this little weird sliver thing that gets stuck. Got a big old map, too. Big old guide as well. Are you kidding me on this? This is crazy. I wish games still included stuff like this. I mean, now it's all the internet and downloads and whatever, but still, man, this was so fun. And the label condition on this is super fresh. But you know what else is fresh? My factor meals, because they're fresh, never frozen, Dietitian approved meals delivered right to your front door. They're so easy and convenient, just two minutes in the microwave, that's it. I've actually been enjoying bringing these to work with me for the last week. So that way I'm not like rushing to get out something or, you know, making bad decisions on buying something where I shouldn't, like at a drive through I know it's funny, my coworkers are like eating leftovers and I'm over here eating like herb crusted chicken. I mean, they have like pork chops and filet mignon, it's insane. They do smoothies too, and these are perfect for just like on the way out the door, grab one of these for the road, I'm perfect. And the final product, come on. How amazing does that look? You get all this, and it tastes even better than it looks. Mm -hmm. It's so good. You can give different styles too. Like uh, I did the calorie smart for a while. This one's keto. There's also like vegan and veggie. There's a protein plus. And it's funny to think too that just one of these, I'm 6'5", 290. Just one of these satisfies me. I'm good. You want yours. I know you do. Head to factor75.com slash John Riggs 50 and use code John Riggs 50 to get 50% off your first factor box. Go ahead. I'll wait. You know what I love? DuckTales. Of course DuckTales is a five-star game. Why wouldn't it be a five-star game? You know what's funny? I've never played this game on difficult. I really should. The after-school cartoon lineup was like super hot. DuckTales was one of the premiere shows and they just did DuckTales so good with this game. I'm so glad they did. This Capcom Disney experience, most of the games are generally really, really good. And this one's great. This game is a bit on the easy side, I will admit that. But if you're just looking for a fun experience, it doesn't matter the difficult setting. It just matters that it's fun. And this game is super fun and still fun today. I know myself included and probably you too. It's one of those games that you just kind of pop in saying, you know what? I want to feel like I accomplished something. I'm just going to pop in DuckTales and just beat it from start to finish just because I can. I don't know how long it takes. It takes like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. I'm never actually timed myself. <laughs> but but it seems just wonderful and it has the huge levels to explore you do not need to go through every crevice and everything to beat these levels but you will find more gems that way and you can get different endings depending on how much money you have at the end of the game DuckTales 100% a five-star game I agree 
G.I. Joe makes the list. There are two G.I. Joe games. This is G.I. Joe, the real American hero. This is the one from Texan. The second one from Capcom didn't quite make five stars, but this Texan one, I agree, is the better of the two. Both are excellent, though. In this game, you can choose from a few of the other characters from G.I. Joe. I'm super, believe it or not, not very familiar with the entire lineup of G.I. Joe, because there's a billion of them. But it plays like a very good running gun style game. And the different levels have different things to do. So it's not just like Contra, where it's just like, here you go, here you go. Actually, I shouldn't compare Contra, because Contra has a few different gameplay styles too. But it's not just like, you know, level one, level two, level three, here you go. Uh, the first stage you go through and you fight the things, you fight the enemy, you fight the boss, you can switch from the characters as needed. And then like the second stage, you're going through this entire level, putting your C4 explosives, is that what they call them? on the wall to get yourself to the next stage. And there's other stuff later on too, but this is a fun, fun game, and I love this game. And yeah, five star, I agree. Guerrilla War, interesting to see as a five star game. I'm not saying it's a terrible game. Is it five star though? Well, I mean, they thought so. It is a good game. It's like Akari, and I loved Akari Warriors in the arcade, but it's like Akari Warriors, but so much quicker and faster and almost like more concise and to the point. Although this one also has uh, like hostages that you cannot, you, you can get rid of the hostages. Unfortunately, you lose points by doing that. So save the hostages, kill the bad guys. You can also hop in the tank and drive around and run over people and you know use that as well. This is a fun game and a lot of moving characters on screen at once and it, it's, it's fun to check out for sure. Great two player experience on this one and unlimited continues and you start and respawn right where you died. So you can also beat this game the first time you play it. Is it five stars though? Well, not for me to decide. How about Kirby's Adventure? Now, I do love me some Kirby. And this is the one that changed a lot of how Kirby is viewed, if that makes sense. Now, the first two Kirby games were on the Game Boy. Those were fine. But Kirby's copy ability, the thing that Kirby's kind of known for, the ability to, like, swallow enemies and, like, take on their characteristics, it started with this one for the NES. And that was always kind of the fun of what can you turn into? Can you swallow this enemy and turn into something? You know, and there's enemies on here maybe that you can swallow later in games, but in this one, they're, they're not anything yet. Yeah, so something to keep in mind when you're playing this, if you're playing it for the first time, which may, may happen. Always a little bonus stages too. Kirby, fun, looks cutesy, looks simple. Maybe a little bit on the simple side, but again, just super, super fun. You cannot go wrong. I don't think there's literally any Kirby game I don't like. The Legend of Zelda is a five-star game. Yes, it is. I agree. All right. I don't need to go on much for that. <laughs> Hey, what about Maniac Mansion? I played me a whole lot of this game. So Maniac Mansion, point and click style game from the computer, now available on the NES and done extremely well on the NES. You always play as the one guy who's trying to save the girlfriend or whatever, but you can recruit any two of your friends and the different people have different endings depending on how you want to go through things. Like you can write a book, become a published author. I know it's kind of weird, but bear with me. Uh, you can you know write a song and stuff like that. These are things that you'll need to go to get through to properly beat the game. This game has something like, what was it? Like 11 endings? Maybe it was like seven endings, I don't remember. Um, I think I found like five of them. I used to play this game a lot, but still fun to go through. And it plays a little clunky on an NES as you figure it would with using a D-pad and buttons, but it still plays well enough that you can play through this game. And I, I, I think it's just, I just think it's excellent. It's a marvel that a game like this exists on the NES. And of all the Mega Man games, we go to Mega Man 2. Is it nostalgia doing the speaking for us? Well, I don't know. I mean, I do th I do consider Mega Man 2 my favorite of all the Mega Man games as well. You still do the thing where you push A and B at the same time to uh, show the things instead of the stars? Anyway, the Mega Man games started to evolve after a while. This one, you cannot do the slide. You cannot charge up your meter to, you know, shoot a, a powerful blast or anything like that. But it does have the ability, just like the first Mega Man did, where when you beat a boss, you can use their weapon um, against them or, uh, you know, to use to your advantage or things like that too. So it would be hard to say if I played all six Mega Man games on the NES for the first time, if I would have considered this the five-star game, the best one. I consider it the best one now. Maybe it's because I was too influenced because this game came out prime peak for NES. And it was like, you know, again, during a time when it was one of the few games I had. So this, this is the game I played all the time. There's a couple of other Mega Man games I would also give five stars too, but according to the book, this is the only one. And I know everyone uses boomerangs on this dragon, but I kind of like to use the heat blaster myself. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out, a five-star game? Absolutely it is. Out of all the five-star games, this one's got to be a five-star game. Huge graphics, very impressive. It doesn't look like you can do anything else with this game. It is its own genre. I mean, yeah, you say boxing, but this is so much more than just a boxing game. They made it fun. Like, they made it, I mean, not, not just the cartoony characters of the enemies and all that, you want to see who's coming up next, but the, you can play it offensively and just ho hope that you're landing punches, or you can play it 
defensively where you can see they're telegraphing their moves. They telegraph their moves so you know when to dodge and you can counterattack or maybe some sometimes it's a different style of attack. So you have to learn all of the boxers when they first show up to find out how to really take them down. And I just loved that about this game. So much personality. I've never been able to TKO Mike Tyson. Let's give it a shot. Well, all right, maybe next time. In this book, Miss Pac-Man was listed as a five-star game. I mean, Miss Pac-Man is a five-star game. I mean, in the arcade, you can't deny its you know, popularity and all that. But on the NES? Huh? All right. Pirates for the NES, another one of those point-and-click style games like Maniac Mansion. From the computer, now to your NES, and done extremely, extremely well. Now, I mostly play this game as Pirate's Gold on the Sega Genesis, but the NES one plays very, very well, too. Well, you're a pirate, and you're recruiting people, and you can explore, and you can look for buried treasure, and you can, uh, you know, take over other ships and stuff like that, and just, you know, sail, sail around. I love this game. And yeah, it's a five-star game, for sure. River City Ransom, come on now. Every time I've... And, and I haven't played this game in a while, admittedly, as you can clearly see by my terrible gameplay now. I haven't played this game in quite a while. And just playing it this this much to capture my own footage made me want to play this game again. I'm going to play this game again probably coming up this, uh, you know, as soon as I can, maybe this weekend. But you take a game like a Double Dragon, like a beat-em-up, like a side-scrolling brawler, but you give it a little bit of that what we would now today consider RPG elements, where you can power up your character. You can level up. You can go to the store and buy things and get more power and get more weapon and get more ability. This is kind of like the every AAA game today that does stuff like this, where you just do the things and you use your whatever points, in this case it's money, to level up your character and build up your character. And it wasn't really that heard of during this time to have, I mean, you could do that for RPGs, like turn-based RPGs, but not a game that you can just kind of do your own thing. Very few. And two-player simultaneous and little open world area where you can like go to different places and, you know, take on be gang leaders and stuff like that. Love this game. Absolutely love this game. Well, we have the Marios. Let's cover them all. Super Mario Brothers five-star game. Of course, Super Mario Brothers is a five-star game. Yep, yep. Super Mario Brothers 2 also landed that five-star listing. I'm okay with that. I love Super Mario 2. Mario 3, of course, out of all the games on this list, of course, Mario 3 was going to be a five-star game. In Mario 3, you ever go behind the uh, white blocks just to, like, you know, hide in the bushes and stuff like that? <laughs> That's kind of fun. Super Tecmo Bowl. No, Tecmo, sorry, Tecmo Super Bowl. I get that mixed up every time. Tecmo Super Bowl. Fantastic. And five-star game. And yeah, absolutely. In one of the instances where it uses licensed teams and licensed players. Like when you score a touchdown and stuff like that, it's actually the player from the team, not just like some made-up name. And very easy to pick up and play. Even if you don't know a lot about football and how it works, there are probably people today who play football professionally because they got started playing this game. And there are people like myself who didn't really quite understand the rules of football, but learned the rules of football by playing a game like this. Tecmo Super Bowl is absolutely fantastic, and yeah, it definitely deserves to be on the list of five-star games. And as a bonus, Gimmick should also be on this list for a five-star game because it was listed in this book as a five-star game. Now, this did not come out in the United States of America, available for PAL regions in the UK, as well as for the Famicom. In PAL, it was Mr. Gimmick, and then on uh, Famicom, I believe it was just called Gimmick. This game, visually impressive. Sunsoft made some of the best NES games, and I wish we would have seen this in the United States. It would have been wonderful. It, it, it would have sold very well. It would have been as nostalgic as maybe like a Kirby in our standards today, I think. Now, I don't care for the play controls, because you are very, very slippery, very, very slidey, and there's a difficult setting on this game that a lot of people don't talk about, but, you know, and maybe this game shouldn't be on this list, because we're talking about all the five-star NES games. Well, I mean, on the other hand, thanks to things like Raspberry Pis and Misters, and this game gimmick is coming out to modern consoles, this 8-bit version, coming out very, very soon uh, to modern consoles here, you'll have a chance to play this game soon enough. So I just wanted to include this on the list that when you do see it, five-star game, absolutely deserved. We also covered the one-star NES games, but what are the other five-star games that's missing from this list? I can think of several, so those will be in the next video, but courtesy of your comments, I can't include all the comments for five-star games, but I know there's gonna be a lot of them. I, I already know of several of them that should have been on this list.